Hi, I'm Rick from Imply, and I'd like to take a few minutes to walk you through data analysis on our big data platform. We like to call Polaris the easy button for Apache Druid. Druid is a purpose-built analytics database for streaming and batch data. And Polaris is fully managed Druid. It simplifies Druid setup and management and offers additional features like visualizations, which we'll get into a little later. In this video, we'll walk through the process of setting up an Imply Polaris account, creating a data source, loading data, running queries, creating cubes, and also visualizing data. So in order to create an Imply Polaris account, you go to setupimply.io, get started, enter your name, organization, info, where you're located, work email, and set a password. And then you'll receive an email with a verification link to complete the process. Next, let's download some data to use in this demonstration. Here's the link to the data set. So I'm just gonna download this data. Now that we have the data, the next step is adding the data source to Polaris. So here I'm logged in to Polaris and I'm on the main dashboard. In order to create a data source, I'm going to click on Sources, then New Data Source, and I'm going to select Files from Computer. Here I'm going to select that Wikipedia file. As you can see, I have multiple copies of the file, but I'll select that Wikipedia file. And now we have that added as a data source. Now let's load our data into a table. To do this, I'm going to click on tables, then create table. I'm going to name it Wikipedia. I've got several of these. I've done this a few times. So I'll name this Wikipedia 4 for this example, and then select create. Now I'm going to select load data and insert data, select files, and then that source that we just created, which was uh, four in this example. Then I'm going to hit next. The format is already selected as JSON. I'm going to continue. And then I'm going to start the ingestion. Once the ingestion is completed, We can go look at the status and job details. And then we can go back to the main dashboard. Now it's time for the fun stuff. Let's run some analytical queries. To do that, I'm going to choose this SQL icon. And I've already got some queries queued up to save time. This first query. It's grouping data by the hour based on the time column. There's a count of the records in each group, uh, which represents the edits per hour. And then it orders that in ascending order. So they are the results of that query. This query does a count of the number of edits made by non-humans. So this is the number of edits done by computers, done by robots, and it sorts the results in descending order. It's limited by 10, so you get the top 10 uh, robotic users. All right. So that's the count of the top robotic user that's making edits on that particular day. This query uses time series analysis. So it selects the time and runs it down to the nearest hour using the floor function. And then it groups the data returned for that specific time range, uh, which is between 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. on June 27th. And there we have the edits for that particular time period.
The square uses the floor function to round the timestamp down to the nearest hour. And then it does a count of the number of edits by human users. So that's where our is robot is equal to false. And again, for that specified time range of June 27th, uh, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. And it's sorting in descending order and limited to the top 10 users. So we get the highest number of edits. We had the top 10 highest number of edits. So RAS67 was a user with the top edits for that time period. This last query utilizes a subquery. So the subquery filters out the rows where is user column is false. So it's gonna return human users and groups the data by user and page per minute. It also calculates the count of distinct pages edited by each user. And then the outer query selects the human user page time and minute and average number of distinct pages edited for each minute from the inner subquery and displays the results. You can also download the results of these queries by hitting this download button and then you can save it in several different file formats. Now let's create some visualizations in imply Polaris using the pivot service. So I'm gonna go back to the home dashboard. Then I'm gonna select data cubes and then create new data cube. I already have several data cubes uh, with that Wikipedia name. So in this case, I would save it as Wikipedia 4 for this example, and then hit create data cube and go ahead and hit save. Now we can start adding different fields to create our visualizations. Let's start by adding the time and his robot fields to the show row. So now we can compare by the edits done when is robot is true versus the edits done when is robot is false. Basically a comparison between humans and robots. We're gonna go ahead and save this to a new dashboard. I've already got example dashboard here. So I'm gonna create a new dashboard in this situation. And call that new dashboard, example dashboard two. Then I'm gonna hit create. Next, let's add the country name to the visualization. So now we have the number of events comparing humans to robots based on country. We're gonna go ahead and save that also to the dashboard. We're gonna add it to the existing dashboard. Lastly, let's filter the visualization to only show human entries. We're gonna add is robot to the filter row. And we're gonna only filter where is robot is equal to false, which means there's a human uh, making that edit. Now we're gonna go ahead and save that to the dashboard. So we're gonna add it to our existing example dashboard. And there we have it. Note that these dashboards 
are dynamic. So if this data was being updated in real time, the dashboards would also update in real time. In this demonstration, we've shown how Imply Polaris simplifies the process of deploying and managing real-time analytics with Apache Druid. So the bottom line is by using Imply Polaris, organizations can easily store, analyze, and visualize large volumes of data, which allows them to make better data-driven decisions. Thanks for watching.